Hi there. So today we're going to look at the first of what I call some infinite tuning. So you know in just intonation how you're always tuning by frequency ratios, uh, two to one for the octave, three to two for perfect fifth, five to four for the, the just five limit major third, the pure major third. So all of these things by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic the multiples of different prime numbers don't ever add up to be uh, the same number. So you can't multiply 3 by 3 by 3 some amount of times and it's going to equal to 5 times 5 times 5 some amount of times because every number has a unique prime factorization. So when you're using different harmonics, uh, basically you're doing something like that. So every octave is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 in the frequencies and all of the fifths are going to be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And you can divide them by 2 um, and that's fine, but you're never going to actually get any amount of uh, 3s and 2s. And the, re the reason you can divide it by 2 and it doesn't change anything is that all of those 2s are already being multiplied on the uh, on the two train. Like if you can imagine all the twos go in this one spectrum, all the threes go in this spectrum, it doesn't really matter how many times because all the twos are going to be there anyways. So dividing by the twos on the three two, it kind of puts everything within one octave so it makes it easier for us to, to see because otherwise we just get a bunch of octaves. But um, anyways, that's why, that's why we get the Pythagorean comma when we're making a 12 tone tuning. We go make the 12 fifths and we get the Pythagorean comma before we actually get the C to the C. So the same thing happens if we tune by the, the 5, 4 or the fifth harmonic. So, so if we tune a harmonic, um, I know I meant to try it. Anyway, so let's get a nice just major third. Uh, let's get a nice just major triad from the, the third. And then here we can still do it. We're still in the first octave. but. And starting to get there. So the idea was to tune all of these into just major thirds. And, and so we're going to get this octave that's a bit out. The tuning might have moved a little bit. That sounds good still. And this octave is a bit out. That's not quite that's not quite the one I want. So one way to check if this is there, we have this octave that shouldn't be an octave. It's gonna be a bit less because if we remember the major third, the just major third is 384 cents or about 15 cents flat uh, from the 400 cent major third and having the three 400 cent major thirds makes an octave. That's why we have that augmented triad in 12 tone. So, so we're going to want that a bit flat, and then we're going to want to use, sorry about that weird drill in the background. That sounds pretty good. Ah, uh, that should be good, there we go. Uh, so let me fix these other ones because everything got... So here's a C again. And then... So these are all gonna have to be dropped a little bit. Okay, so this all sounds pretty good. And anyways, for the students to get some of the other things, I did a few a, a sequence of some fifths to start because then we can get. So I wanted to get all of the the major thirds, and I tuned these ones as well. These ones weren't quite. I mean, there's there was no reference point unless I was going to do the octaves. So those ones are kind of just irrelevant. But the idea was to get major thirds all the way up. a bit here. So sorry for the off ones. This uh, I got the idea and wanted to share. Uh, 
anyways we're pretty close to this tuning and like I often say the the idea is more important than the exact I mean depending on the tuning sometimes it's really nice to have the exact tuning and get all the frequencies that you want but sometimes you want to get close and experiment with it and see how it sounds get the idea get the idea into into yours and see what kind of shapes are kind of there and then maybe move it a little bit like do I, do I want to have all of a sudden oh why do I have a major triad here I shouldn't have a major triad here what happened because we should have something that sounds more like that this doesn't sound that good but maybe let's just uh Let's just keep it for now. Let's hear a little bit how it is sounding right now. So one of the things about these kind of tunings is sometimes we want to think, oh, we tuned all of these augmented triads. Let's just fuck with all of that. But sometimes it's nice to just go with some completely different shapes and explore different patterns that kind of come as a secondary factor from that. So we're going to get this shimmer thing from the octaves because we're not going to get these perfect octaves. So, so we're going to get all of these kind of cool commas if we're just doing... So we get all of these wacky cool sounds that come, we get a bit of shimmer, we get a bunch of good harmonics every once in a while because it's an acoustic instrument and I found this a lot on the, the Curio pianos, the Sonido Tracy pianos in San Luis Potosí, that's the 18 tone, third tone piano. Every once in a while you would end up because it's not tuned all the time or, or however it goes or the tuning 18 tone ecotomometer is kind of hard, you'd eventually get something that's like a regular temperament of it and you get like you get a nice major triad that shouldn't I, it shouldn't really exist in a tuning that doesn't have any perfect fifths. All of a sudden, you get a perfect fifth somewhere, and then it's like, well, should I keep it, or should I figure out which part of the tuning kind of went with that? Because an acoustic instrument starts to change tuning all the time, so dropping all the octaves kind of, dropping all the octaves uh, loosened all of the tension to this, and I gotta, I gotta move it today to another spot so I'm gonna loosen all the strings and retune it so this is the last one that I'm going to do for for today well, on this tuning I wanted to do one last tuning I mean I'm gonna keep doing some more next week or whatever but I wanted to, to kind of show this idea of what these infinite tunings are like and there's a lot of different patterns to it and I was thinking well how am I going to do it at first and I thought well I'm gonna tune all of these and then what about the second one? Like, what about the the C sharp? Where is that gonna come? And I was like, oh well, maybe I can do like a, a, a diminished seventh and do like 
and it's like, well, that's not going to give me the C sharp either. But that could give me the that could give me the F sharp. But then if I want to tune to the D, so do I want to tune the F sharp as like a stack of the diminished tries? And it's like, well, if I do this all in the diminished thirds, then which C am I going to use? Am I going to use the C that is a bit higher, the bit higher, like the comma higher, by using the that I'm in your seventh and the just minor third, then well that makes it a contradiction. Maybe that's the next one I'll do. Maybe that will be one of the the Patreon ones because eventually I'll do some to to see if y'all can help me out to keep making these videos if you like it. Uh, but that's yeah, that's a different option. If I, I could use the minor third, and then the octave would be a bit higher. Then say, like, well maybe I could make tune that octave to this C sharp and then do it again, and then we're getting this kind of bent octave thing where we're going to get perfect octaves doing like a major seventh but then the actual octaves are going to be with that comma so we're going to get this wacky comma thing going between those but anyways that's one of the ways so like with these infinite patterns you can do it in so many different ways there's there's no reason why i needed to do this uh these first ones like the first this little mini chain of fifths that it's not really going to exist anywhere else, it's just kind of like a basis point and it kind of helped help for the tuning reference because sometimes with the major chord it's easier to hear the 4-5-6 major triad like the 1-3-5, the 4-5-6 five, five, is its relation and just intonation, 1-3-5 is the, the scale degrees as we know. Then just hearing the 1 and the just major 3rd. Uh, at least for me, it sometimes makes it easier to kind of close close the bubble. Sometimes having more harmonies allows the just intonation once to go uh, a bit closer together. Um, what other kind of patterns are here? Uh, we kind of talked about the commas. We saw that this was based around um, that chain. I mean, so when, so we got that chain basically starting on the C, on the D, on the E. And then, I guess on the on the F sharp, this one's already a bit a bit wacky. But anyways, it should be from there as well. And then at this point, we could say like, oh well, maybe this D we're gonna go down to the octave. But then we're just getting an octave here. It's kind of it's kind of irrelevant unless we want to use this D for something else. It's nice to have some octaves. We can always use some of those things to base the harmony in one part or or another uh, when we have a 12 tone keyboard that's built for the symmetry and not for a pattern like this of stacking just major thirds we have to kind of figure out where we're going to keep the generator if we're going to generate all the notes like not all of them are going to come from from the same pattern because if we just do the one pattern from the root we're just going to get the and then, then we're stuck. We don't really have anything else. We have to find some other chain of intervals to go to go through that. So, in this one, I decided to go. Well, no, let's let's do from these ones because uh, then we get we get we get the F. Maybe I tune it from there, and that's kind of like this one too. So this is a fun way to try a non-octave tuning, a non-fifths tuning, I mean, a, a some-fifths tuning, and see what kind of things uh, come out. When I mean, we get a lot of cool effects with uh, using an acoustic instrument and having non-octave equivalents using some of the different patterns from the different harmonics, and we can choose all sorts of different harmonics. So this is number one of a soon-to-grow series of infinite tuning videos and I'll do a little short improvisation here again, and then I'll do another, I'll, I'll practice some things and then post another video that's uh, of an improvisation that is uh, a bit planned and I find some some themes and I kind of practice a bit because sometimes I'll do the video, the instructional video, and then I'll play something and it's like, well, that wasn't very good, but it's already in the video. Um, so anyways, let's hear some of these sounds.